Hello everyone and welcome to the first book haul I have done in a very, very long time. For anyone new here, my name is Carrie Hope Fletcher, I'm a musical theatre performer, an author, and I've been a vlogger on YouTube now for 10 years. I feel like that warrants the title YouTube Dinosaur now. I feel like I'm there. My passion for reading took a real hardcore nosedive for about three years. For three years I was in a reading slump. For the simple reason that I was prioritising other things that needed to be prioritised, quite frankly. But with the help of Bookstagram, Booktube and Booktok, which is a thing, I have now had my passion and love of reading reignited. It also helps that I now have bookshelves up to house all of my books and they are no longer in boxes in the garage. So if these shelves aren't incentive for reading more, I don't know what is. Those of you in the UK will know that bookshops, all shops, but more importantly bookshops, reopened on Monday the 12th of April and Sunday night felt like Christmas Eve. I was so excited to get myself back into a bookshop on Monday morning and that's exactly what I did. Got on a bus and I got on a train and I went to my old local bookshop where I grew up. It was the bookshop that I used to go into at least twice a week when I was growing up. And it's been a very long time since I have been able to justify going into a bookshop and buying more than one or two books, simply because I just wasn't reading enough. However, I have now surpassed my halfway mark for my reading goal this year. My reading goal was 50 books, I am now reading my 26th book. Or maybe I'm on my 27th. I've passed the halfway mark, is the important thing. So if I keep going the way that I'm going, I'm really hoping to smash that 50 book goal by quite a few books. That is the dream, but I say this during April where I am not working at the theatre every day and as soon as May hits I start rehearsals on May the 3rd for Cinderella. So as soon as that hits time is reduced dramatically, but that gives me just under three weeks to read as many books as I possibly can before Cinderella rehearsal starts, so I'm gonna get cracking. But today I thought I would share with you the seven, yes, seven books that I bought on Monday that I am so excited to read. Some of them were upon your recommendation on Instagram. I asked over on my bookstagram for recommendations from you lovely people and I got many, many wonderful recommendations that I then put onto my Waterstones wishlist and consulted when I was wandering around Waterstones. However, there were some books that just happened to fall into my hands and come home with me. The first book was a recommendation from all of you lovely people. It was The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This sounds right up my street. This is about a woman called Evelyn Hardcastle who gets killed at a party that her parents have thrown, but then every time she gets killed, she wakes up again and is back at the party and keeps being killed over and over again and there's another person at the party called Aidan Bishop who is trying to save Evelyn Hardcastle but every time she dies he wakes up as a different guest at the party so he has to try and figure out who killed her in order to make this loop stop. I am so excited by this book. For anyone who has read my book In The Time We Lost you will know that I love a time loop. I love people who are stuck in some kind of cycle and need to figure out how to get themselves out. This is slightly longer than all the books that I've been reading this year. This book is just over 500 pages and all the books that I've read this year have been anywhere between 350 and 450 so it daunts me slightly but I'm so intrigued by the story that I am going to get to this soon because I'm very excited to read this one. The next book has the prettiest sprayed edges I have ever seen I mean, look at that. This is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I was actually searching the bookshop for another book by Taylor Jenkins Reid called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? The Seven... Seven Hus... No, not... No. What is it? That's so bizarre. Hang on. It is Evelyn Hugo. But I thought that I was getting confused with Evelyn Hardcastle. So there's two books by two different authors called The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That's too much of a coincidence, no? 
there we go. That was the book that I was actually searching for by Taylor Jenkins Reid. My bookshop didn't have it, but they did have Daisy Jones and the Six, and so many people had recommended it that I thought I would give it a go. This book is about a band called Daisy Jones and the Six. They split up suddenly, no one knew why, and now the story of their split is being revealed for the first time. It says everyone was there, everyone remembers it differently. I have a big brother who is in a band. I'm always very intrigued by books that are about fame, um, especially people who are like suddenly shot to fame. I really enjoy that kind of story, that trope, is it trope? I always feel like I'm using the word trope wrong. I'm always very intrigued by books that centre around fame and fan culture. It's something that I'm just super interested in, so I think I'm really going to enjoy this one. I picked up this next book because I'm about to play this role, and I'm very interested in reading lots of different retellings of this story, just for my own entertainment and my own amusement. I could probably try and pass it off as research, but it's not. Um, but I have Cinder behind me, which I've never read, but I got given that at Stage Door a very long time ago. And I also have Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister by Gregory Maguire, which I also haven't read. This is by the same author as Wicked, and I feel like Gregory Maguire has kind of become the king of retellings. I've got Lost, which I think is very reminiscent. It's not a retelling, but I think it's very reminiscent of A Christmas Carol. And then there's also Mirror Mirror, which is a retelling of Snow White, of course. I'm very interested in retellings of fairy tales anyway, but obviously at the moment I'm more interested specifically in retellings of Cinderella, which is why I picked up Cinderella Is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. I am so excited to read this book. It sounds so up my street. It reminded me a little bit of um, Matched, the Matched series by Ali Condi, if I'm getting that right. I can't see it up there, but oh there it is. Ali Ali Condi. Ali Condi, I remembered. It's 200 years since Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Sophia knows the story though, off by heart, because every girl has to recite it daily from when she's tiny until the night she's sent to the royal ball for choosing. And every girl knows that she only has one chance. For the lives of those not chosen by a man, at the ball are forfeit, but Sophia doesn't want to be chosen, she doesn't want to go to the ball at all, not when she's afraid the girl she loves might be chosen too. It sounds so good! Also, can we talk about this cover? I mean, just stunning. Next up, we have a fun little book called The House at the Edge of Magic. Look how glowy and sparkly that is. So this is about a pickpocket, an orphan pickpocket called Nine, and she pinches a treasure, an ornament. The ornament grows into a giant house that contains lots of weird and wacky residents. I just get the feeling that this is gonna be 227 pages of pure magic and I can't wait. Next, I have three beautiful hardbacks and these are the ones that just jumped from the shelves into my hands through no fault of my own. The first one is a book of short stories called Land of Big Numbers by T. Ping Chen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This really made me think of Andrew Kaufman when I read the blurb of this. Andrew Kaufman is my favourite author. He deals in magical realism. I love his concepts and his writing and I just love how unashamedly odd they are. So the one thing that made me go, I need this book because I have to read that story, is it says in the blurb, it kind of lists what some of the stories are about. And this one says, a delicious new fruit arrives at the neighborhood market and the locals find it starts to affect their lives in ways they could never have imagined. I was like, I need to read that story so I have to get that book. And it's also got a really interesting, beautiful cover with all of these faces in just these great colours. I'm just a big fan. Again, it's a super short book and it's all short stories as well, so this should be quite easy to get through. It's 233 pages. I'm really looking forward to reading some of these short stories. And the thing that I love about short story books as well is that you don't have to sit and read it all in one go. You can just pick it up and read one story and then move on to something else. Um, knowing me, I will just devour the whole thing though, but that is the beauty of these books. Next, I picked up The Inverts by an author who has got one of the best names I've ever seen, Crystal Jeans. What a brilliant name! This book is set in the 1920s, 1921 to be specific. It is about Bettina and Bart, who are a girl and a boy, who everyone thinks are gonna end up together because they've been friends for forever. However, they are both gay. They are living within the 1920s when that was quite scandalous. And so they both 
marry each other and enter into what I had no idea was called a lavender marriage. As the 20s and 30s whizzed past in a haze of cigarettes, champagne and casual sex, Bart and Bettina have no idea that they are hurtling via Hollywood and Egypt, Paris and London towards tragedy and bloodshed. It sounds like this book is a real wild ride and I'm just so excited to get on board. That was cheesy but you know what I mean. Also another great cover! Look at that! That's such a cool cover! And finally, this book had me hooked by the blurb because again, like I said, I'm really interested in books that are about people being shot to fame and this is a slightly more modern take on that story because it is about an influencer on Instagram. It's called People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd, which is actually a husband and wife writing duo whose names are Colette Lyons and Paul Vlitos. Vlitos? I just thought it was really cool that they came up with like one name for the duo. I think that's awesome. This book is about a woman called Emmy Jackson who's an influencer on Instagram and she is very famous for telling the unvarnished truth about modern parenthood. However, Emmy apparently isn't being as honest as all of her fans think she is being and there is someone out there who knows the truth about Emmy and is going to make her pay. Again, stunning cover, amazing tagline. It says, followed by millions, hunted by one. I love a thriller every now and again. And because this is based around something that I'm just very interested in, I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy this. Well, there we go. There is my book haul. If you have read any of those, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you thought of it. And tell me if there are any books within that haul that I just showed you that you are particularly interested in reading and once I've read them I will let you know what I thought but until then I will see you very soon and thanks for watching bye